Suffering is the price that you pay. Your attitude is your readiness to pay that price. Say that again. Suffering is the price that you pay. Your attitude is your readiness to pay that price. Remember that First Peter is really a manual of discipleship. And that's what it is. And I'm hoping to disciple you from the pulpit every single Sunday morning or whoever's teaching the Bible to you that, that respective day. Um, we've learned throughout this series of marching through First Peter that uh, being a Christian involves a new birth and that new birth leads to a new life in Christ. And uh, in this new life, there's a grand objective that he's given to us. And we've seen uh, how Peter breaks apart uh, teaching for us to live a new life in Christ. Now, 1 Peter 2.11 teaches us about the need for deeply resistant people to hear the gospel and then to eventually come to glorify God. And so we studied that some as well throughout this series. We've even seen how powerfully uh, that speaks to our lives today and how we live for Christ in a culture that holds deeply different values than us. And whether you're at work or at school or uh, even within your own family circle, we can think of how there are indeed people who are highly resistant to the gospel. I had a, a person say to me within the last few weeks, Pastor Jeremy, I really don't envy you with the election coming up and how you're going to have to navigate those difficult waters with the congregation. And uh, I simply just said, you know, I think the Lord is just going to give unity to our church, even through uh, the election season that's coming up and is really ramping up right now. And I just believe that. I pray that. And I, I claim that in the name of Jesus because he's given me peace uh, that our church is going to have peace through the election season. We will not, and I want you to hear me very clearly, we will not allow political differences to cause division in this church. We are going to focus on preaching the name of Jesus Christ in this church. Amen? All right. I got that off my chest. <laughs> now, 1 Peter 4 in verse 1 I want you to hear this. We're going we're gonna to start our reading just with verse 1, and then we're going to pause for a moment at the, after reading this first verse. 1 Peter 4, 1 says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So I want to just pause at the end of that first verse instead of reading through for a moment. There's a reason for that. This is the word of God for ordinary people. You and I, we are just normal, everyday people. And God has given us his word for ordinary people. Uh, God has spoken in a language so that ordinary folks can understand it. The Bible belongs in the hands of the people and not in the hands of uh, a papal hierarchy or something like that. No, we, we don't have to be like it was back in, in the Middle Ages and things like that where uh, only a, a priest was able to, to read and they, they could read Latin while other people could not read Latin. And so only they were controlling what was being taught from the scriptures. No, the Bible belongs in the hands of the people. I deeply believe that. And God has given his Holy Spirit to every single believer in Jesus. In the Holy Spirit, what he does when you read the Bible is he opens up your eyes. He gives you understanding through the word so you can understand the Bible as you read. And it, then you can put it into practice and then you can be encouraged in your growth as a Christian. You can read the Bible and God will make it clearer and clearer what he is saying to you through the reading of the Bible. Here's the key, though. Y'all need to be reading your Bible more. You need to be reading your Bible more. And uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, I read through the New Testament in the month of January. It just really pumped up my walk with God. Uh, I started yesterday, I'm trying to read through the Old Testament in the summertime, uh, June 1 through the end of August. And I'm praying that God will just speak to me 
with clarity about how I need to apply the Old Testament to my life so that I can more fully live for the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's up to you to read the Bible. I can only feed you so much from the pulpit. Your Sunday school teacher can only feed you so much from their respective classroom. But it's up to you to feed yourself the Word of God. Now, here's the truth, though. From time to time, you'll come across something in the Bible, and it's really hard to understand what in the world is going on. Is it just me, or does that happen to you too? You read the Bible, and you're like, what in the world does that mean? Uh, that happens twice for me in 1 Peter. It happens in 1 Peter 3.19 when Christ is preaching to the spirits in prison through Noah, and it's unclear uh, in, in that, that passage. Another statement is 1 Peter 4.1. There's not an immediate, obvious understanding of what this means. And uh, I, I don't want you to worry too much when you're reading the Bible and something just doesn't make sense. Something isn't clear. Um, because I believe that uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, he's going to help you understand it in his time. Now, here's something just really practical that I would encourage you to do as you read through the Bible uh, not reading extra biblical resources, but reading the Bible, what you need to do is reach out to your Sunday school teacher if you don't understand something or if you have a question, reach out to that person and say, hey, does this, what does this message mean to you? Or don't, don't, feel, don't hesitate reaching out to me or, or reaching out to somebody who teaches the Bible to you and, uh, or, or to any of our staff and ask could you help me out with this a little bit? I'm, I'm struggling with this. That is discipleship of, of trying to help somebody else understand it. I do that with my uh, fellow pastor friends where we'll be reading through something or I'll be preparing to teach something. And I'll say, you know, I'm struggling with understanding this. What do you, what do you interpret from this portion of the scripture? And we sharpen one another. It's Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So let's not hesitate to do that. In 1 Peter 4.1, uh, it just led me to have to ask a couple of people their opinions on the interpretation of that, that particular verse. And there are two questions that come out of uh, this first verse that I think are, are important to ask and then to answer. And one is pertaining to suffering and the other is pertaining to attitude. So one, what is the suffering that's mentioned in 1 Peter 4, 1. Because it says here, look at the beginning of verse 1 of 1 Peter 4. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh. Christ suffered in the flesh. If you look back at 1 Peter 3, it addresses how Christians sometimes suffer for doing what is right. Just look at 1 Peter 3, verse 14, and then down to verse 17 as well. 1 Peter 3, 14, it says, Even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. And then down to verse 17 of chapter 3, it says, It's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So the suffering that's being discussed here is not just somebody breaking their leg and they're hurt and they're suffering as a result of that, uh, or they're ill or anything like that. It's specifically pertaining to suffering because you did something that is right in the eyes of Christ. Suffering for doing something that is right in the eyes of Christ. That's the suffering that's being referenced here in 1 Peter 3, 14 and 17, and then on into chapter 4 and verse 1. Jesus did what is right. If you look at 1 Peter 3, 18, it describes him as the righteous one. Jesus had to pay a mighty price for doing what is right. And that price was what? It was his life. Uh, we're now his followers, and the same principle works out in our lives as well. Uh, there will be points in our lives where we have to pay a price for doing what is right in the eyes of Christ. That's what the suffering is. Now, let's address what is the attitude. What's the attitude? You can see at the end of verse 1, 1 Peter 4, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. Arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. 
really in the middle of that verse. The words way of thinking can also be translated as attitude. So if you have your Bible with you, you might want to just write there in the middle of verse 1, right in the margin next to it, same way of thinking, write attitude, because it could be translated the same thing. You're to arm yourselves with the same attitude, according to Peter. Suffering is the price that you pay. Your attitude is your readiness to pay that price. I'm going to say that again. Suffering is the price that you pay. Your attitude is your readiness to pay that price. 